Hi, Travelers Tara here, Hidden Lotus Tarot, and I'm coming to you today with a general reading for the sign of Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising for July 2016. I know that they're very late, and I wanted to say to you guys, thank you so much for bearing with me while I was trying to, I'm trying to catch up here. I had some things earlier uh, during the month, and I wasn't able to get the readings out right away. So I really appreciate your patience for that. Um, those of you who have received Akashic Records readings from me, I want to thank you so much for giving me that opportunity to work with you. Um, yes, I love tarot cards, but I really dig the Akashic Records. That's what I love doing. So I thank you very much um, for trusting me to help you with that work, really. Um, I love it when I hear the Akashic Records client go, oh my God, oh wow, how did you know that? you know and then the puzzle pieces kind of fall into place so um, again thank you those of you who are waiting on Akashic Records for me as soon as I finish these last videos I will be uh, getting back on those so you'll be hearing from me here in a little bit um, my friend Sally Kirkman uh, is no longer doing the one question astrological reading so if you guys didn't get a chance to get on that this year you'll have to wait till next year but um, it Try to keep your eye on that because it's really something special. Um, the last thing, let's see, I got a couple of other things. I, I'm having a special this month. I'm running specials for July on the tarot card readings. Um, it's $20 off the regular phone readings. That special was supposed to start June 6th. Obviously, here it is the 9th, and I'm late. So it was going to run from Ju July 6th until the 13th. I'm actually going to extend that out to the 20th, which time I'm going to be traveling after that. Um, so if you want to book, great, go ahead and book. I do ask that when you book with me, no matter what type of reading that you're getting, I have to work from a blank slate. I don't want to hear what another reader said to you. That's not to say that reader is not correct in her message that she gave you, but I just don't like to, to have anything that interferes with my messages as they come in. Um, let me see there's something else that I wanted to tell you guys we are under still under Pluto retrograde Neptune retrograde on the 30th Uranus will be going retrograde Uranus is like Pluto it becomes when it goes into retrograde uh, status it becomes stronger Uranus is the great liberator it comes in to shake things up quite suddenly and unexpectedly um, do be prepared for perhaps some quick changes in some areas of your life, um, quite unexpected things that's going to maybe put you on a different path. So try to be a little bit open if that occurs. Um, and then on the 17th of July, we will be starting the uh, shadow phase for Mercury retrograde. Mercury is going to be going retrograde August, I think, 9th or 10th. I'm not sure if it's going to be three weeks. I'm not, I think it is. I think it's always three weeks. I don't know. And then after that, we go back into another shadow phase two weeks after. Mercury is the trickster. Um, he likes to play big jokes. Um, so we're going to have four planets in retrograde. So as always, with any retrograde, you're going to have the time to rework, review, revise. It's not necessarily always the time to start something new, particularly with Mercury retrograde. So maybe if there's some old projects that you can go back to, use that time to kind of look those over and shore them up a little bit so this is a general reading as i said for pisces sun moon rising um the messages will not resonate with everyone in which case please check back to your moon and rising sign as it's posted please do not come up underneath the video and ask me if this applies to you or how is it going to end for you in your situation that's why you buy a personal reading because I can tune into your own personal energies and tell you about your own situation. Okay? There's millions of Pisces in the world. Now, whatever messages come out, if you can use them, please try to take what you can use and apply. What doesn't apply, disregard it. All right? All right, I'm going to put a quick... Uh, cut on these. Uh-oh. We're going to go ahead and take that card and see how it fits in. 
so I can show you what that was. It's the two of coins. Nine cards down, Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This card's coming up a lot. It has been in almost every single spread that I've done. Uh-oh. Well, well, well. Pisceans, Pisceans, Pisceans. Let's see what's under the deck. The death card. Okay. Off balance. Financially or emotionally. Being off balance, feeling off balance. Maybe you were supposed to take a trip. You don't have the finances. Maybe you, you, you're you on a trip and, and something's just not going right. Maybe you're visiting with someone. I have the four of coins in the center. So that's, um, I have one major arcana in the spread itself. This Knight of Wands comes in to support this King. So some of you Piscean people may be dealing with, there's a lot of fire in this, one, two, three, four. May be dealing with um, a, a fire sign, a fire sign male, heterosexual or same sex, whomever is going to take the role of the male in the relationship. Past, present, future, past, present, future. Right now, the four of coins is the card of holding on to whatever gains that you have, okay? Just kind of holding on and not moving. It can be represent a card of inertia, just not, just hanging on. It can also be the miser card. Uh, someone being stingy with not only their money, but with their affections, with their time, with their thoughts, with their words. But it can also speak to physical security. So it could be that maybe you're having to be in that space of the four of coins because you need to protect something. Okay? Whatever this means. Now we are coming up up uh, upon the um, eclipse season in September. That's just a couple of months away, believe it or not. And so typically the energy for me, the way I see it is uh, you start to see things that the eclipses always bring about things of three, three people in a situation, or there's a third something that has come into, into the picture. Okay. It kind of throws everything off balance. And remember, we've got Uranus coming in at the end of the month. And what I have is this fire sign male. And this fire sign male has come attached with an offer. Okay. And we can say this is new love, but this is an ace. And the ace just means the opportunity is there. It don't mean nothing else but that. Okay. It don't mean that this is going to be your new love bone and y'all going to get married and have kids the rest of your life. It means the opportunity is there. And you have to grasp that opportunity. Okay. Like any ace, when it comes, you're going to have to grab a hold of it. If you don't grab a hold of it, then you don't get anything out of it. But this is also an opening of intuition. So this card is really all about um, trusting in whatever messages are being sent to you. Um, it can also be an overflowing of emotions. Um, in one sense, it's kind of reading like it's this way. Okay. And like this, it's kind of, to me, is reading like, someone's crying because what I see is that I have something that someone being very guarded and very wounded this is the card of perseverance okay of just kind of digging your heels in and saying oh well whatever this you know I've gone through a battle you know I got a little bit more fight left in me I just need to take a rest right now it goes a nine and a ten to the night in order okay so to me, this speaks of an ex escalation of something. Um, now, I don't know if this fire sign male 
has moved back, if he's moved back, because he's facing the past, okay? He's facing the past and this Nine of Wands. So this could literally be someone for you Piscean people have returned from the past. And I feel in looking at the cards, that there's some ambivalence about this person returning. Maybe that person moved away or went away, or maybe you have uh, the, you know, you guys, maybe you separated or the, I get the sense that the person wasn't there and now they're, they've come back. And during the time that that person was gone, you've been working on some things. You move psychologically away. Okay. You're going in that direction. And you've been just kind of maintaining with this four of pentacles and you've been putting in a lot of work and it hasn't been very easy. Okay. But then I have the six of cups. Now, a lot of people say that is the soulmate card. And I want to be very, very cautious with you about soulmate. And I always warn people about that because a lot of people assume that soulmate means, oh, we're going to get together. Life's going to be lovely. We're never going to have arguments. We're going to, when we turn 75, retire and get us a, a camper and travel all over the United States. No, soulmate relationships can be some of the toughest, hardest tear jerkiness, heart rippingness relationships you'll ever have. And it does not always mean that that person is supposed to stay in your life. The person shows up to show you some things about yourself. That's the opportunity of the Ace of Cups. It is an opportunity for you to gain some real spiritual growth and some emotional growth. But that comes through whatever trials and tribulations that you have with whomever this King of Wands person represents. Now, the lovers. So we know that somebody has returned from the past. This is apparent. And we have the lovers. And this is the card of a choice. It's not the Two of Cups. It's the lovers. And the lovers is a choice. The lovers, and every time you, you go into any type of relationship with someone, you make a choice to do that. Okay? But not only that, whenever you are in a relationship and you decide to stay, okay, that is a choice because you have to get up every day and make the choice that you're going to work on that, right? So that's a choice. But then something arrives quite suddenly, okay? Something comes in quite suddenly. This is an unexpected event and it's going to like come out of nowhere. And it's sort of like there's also somebody else riding into the picture. They will be coming from east to west. Okay. Now, I can look at this. It's kind of a, a odd thing, this row, because this guy's facing the past. This one is facing the future. And this speaks to someone returning from the past. Maybe this fire sign person went away and now they've come back home. All right. But with the lovers here, down the center, this opportunity, but for some reason, there's some guardedness here. There's a, a decision to be made. And something's going to come in very, very, very suddenly to help that decision come through. Now, I have, this is a three. Three people. That's what that angel represents. There's some decks where there is no angel, okay? But in this deck, there's an angel. And the angel represents not only trying to balance the masculine and feminine energies of yourself, but it also represents somebody coming in between the two of you. Quite suddenly. Maybe that's why this King of Wands is looking back at this. Maybe this King of Wands went on a trip and did something he wasn't supposed to do. What comes up is the death card. And the death card is about an ending. So something is going to be coming to an ending and it's going to come suddenly, perhaps even unexpectedly. Now, I don't ever like to give people bad news, but I'm not a Pollyanna either, okay? So I'm gonna give it to you straight. Some of you may be getting the news that a relationship is going to come to an end. Maybe you yourself decide to, to end the relationship. But as we know about death, death is a transformation. 
it is not the end it is the end of one way of life or one way of being or one way of existing and then transitioning to another state of living being in existence okay now when you hear that there is going to be an ending particularly in a relationship um, that's a hard thing to hear okay but no one can escape death so it's kind of like the cards are saying uh, the ending is going to be the ending I want to see what this whole row this is a really confusing reading people I'm trying to give it to you as it comes to me but it's, it's a really I have two sixes here three sixes well let's see what that's all about I'm gonna give you two interpretations so we can kinda of cover our base bases give you the first one it's three sixes well and that could be why the death card has come up that's very interesting let me tell you what it says here wait a minute where is it it speaks to great pleasures now let's make sure because I was reading the wrong thing and I was going to be like wow that's interesting but it is it's one two three six it speaks to great pleasure okay and that's what it's telling me here I'm going to give you the other interpretation because like I said this is there's an opportunity for something here I just the death card comes up maybe it's not a change for the worst maybe it's a change for the better let me see what the other one says three sixes now some of you with three sixes that's a sign of the devil no come on <laughs> Nah, nah. The three sixes, <clears throat> the other interpret. I want you to listen. <clears throat> the three sixes, the other interpretation. Listen. Three sixes tells of an exciting romance. They imply that there are quote unquote romantic times ahead. As I was saying, there is some kind of ending coming. Okay. But this particular ending is a transformation into something else. I'm just going to go ahead and pull. I want to pull cards on this Six of Swords, this Knight of Wands, and the Death card. This is a very, very strange reading. Um, with the one major arcana here um, and maybe what the cards is saying is that you have an offer that that has come in this is the present and you're just hanging on right now you're not you're being in a protective mode because there, you have to make a choice let's just see I, I don't want to speculate let's see if the cards can give us some more information about this see look it speaks, it goes back to this king of wands. Remember I was saying it's kind of like maybe he did something he wasn't supposed to. I have the thief, the falsita, and the melancholia. Some kind of change that has been brought about through something hidden or some deception. This card can also speak to fear, but there's a great sadness over this. Maybe that's why you had to move away from the situation. Knight of wands. The superbia has been coming up a lot. Now, this is suddenly, perhaps there has been no communication between you and this person. We're going to speak to get some new communications. That communication itself may be successful, okay? But you got to remember, just as fast as the person shows up, the person can leave. That's the energy of the Knight of Wands. So it could be that this is someone who's going to show you their true colors. 
I'm just going to give it to you like that. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. The theme of three, I, it's, even though the three sixes say an exciting romance and they say the implication and great pleasure, these three cards on the death card are kind of odd to me. I have the casa, the house, the il nemico, and then the consolante sorpresa. Now this could literally be that there's a new guy on the horizon that's coming in and he could be not a new guy, but he's going to be new, but he was old. Somebody that you know from the past is going to show up. He may come in the guys just as, remember, just as quickly as he arrives, he can leave. And he, I think, is going to be the catalyst for some kind of ending. But yet we have the consolante sorpresa out of it. That's really kind of an odd reading, and I can't, I don't want to go any more into it because it's kind of confusing even to me. Um, I guess you'll just have to either get a reading, if you recognize this, to know what the hell really is going to happen. Or we'll just have to wait and see. I hope that message helped you, Pisces. And until next time, namaste.